I said a lot of great and amazing things about my peers, but I'm pretty envious that they have these cool mics attached to themselves. They can do all the gestures they want to do. I have to make sure I can read and that I can, you guys can hear me. Um, but without further ado, our next, our next presenter is, that's, no, that's neither here nor there, as my elementary uh, teacher used to say. Um, but our next presenter is Meg Green. Meg is a senior athletic training student from, North Carol from Charlotte, North Carolina. During her time at Emory and Henry College, Meg has been a member of the cross country team and athletic training or student organization. After graduation, Meg will be working with Puerto Rico with, um, Meg will be working with the Puerto Rico Collegiate Baseball League in uh, Salinas, Puerto Rico, starting in June, and hopes to continue work with the baseball throughout her athletic training career. For Meg, learning is an unexpected journey, and her education has been more than a destination. Please help me in introducing Meg Green. As Cliff said, my name is Meg Green. I'm an athletic training student here at Emory. It's my senior year. So, this is Mark O'Neill. He's the president of the Professional Baseball Athletic Training Society. He's also the head athletic trainer for the Chicago Cubs in the MLB, also known as the Major League Baseball. And this is me wearing his World 2016 World Series ring. It's really pretty heavy, actually. And this is the journey of how I got there. So, my journey wasn't like everyone else's. Um, I entered the athletic training student life in 2015 <laughs> with a couple struggles here and there and some um, journeys that I didn't always succeed. Um, I failed some and I did pretty well in some, but I never gave up. Um, until about 2017 of my junior year, I started to get bored and I started to fall into this routine and I needed to change something, but I wasn't sure what to change. And then in September of last semester, my senior year, I was so ready to be done. I received this email among the, what, 800 emails we received from our advisors, DC Kobler, shout out. Um, <laughs> And it said, Global Learning Experience Athletic Training in London, England. I was like, oh, let's do that. It's like, this will give me something new. This will freshen me up. I'll be able to do something. So this was a bit of an experience for me because I wasn't doing it with any of my other peers. I was going alone. Um, it wasn't my first time traveling alone. I went to Australia when I was uh, 15. But this was a new experience. I was going completely outside of my comfort zone. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but I applied. I applied in September, and after a month of being very anxious and waiting, countless days, and always nagging on Beth in DC, should I email them? Should I email them? I didn't, and I finally waited, and I received that email. And then I got accepted, and I was so excited. But then the first thing that popped into my head was, holy cow, I'm going to London? This is going to be expensive. <laughs> so I talked to so many different people, from Joe to uh, the study abroad program here at Emory and Henry. And I said, what can I do? What can help me pay for this trip? So apply, I applied for a study abroad grant and received that abroad grant actually walking away with making money for my trip, which was pretty cool. But I was going with King's College. My preceptor went there, so shout out to him. I was one of 50 athletic training students to be the first person to go, or the first group of people to go abroad in a sports medicine conference. It was a pretty big deal, and it was with NATA, the National Athletic Trainers Association. So when I was there, I got to meet some pretty awesome people. There were five other athletic trainers from around the country in the United States and some sports rehabilitators from London. Not only that, but I also got to meet, here on the left, Tori Lindley. He's the NATA president, It's pretty cool. And then Brian Zeller. He's the international chair of the NATA. Some pretty famous people in the, in the athletic training world. 
but I also got to meet some amazing people and got to um, share some pretty cool stories. So we got to share some horror stories from being on the fields to being in the clinic, being in the classrooms. We did all sorts of things. And I actually still talk to my roommate right here every day. We can compare all of these stories all the time. Who knows what cricket is? Anyone? A couple hands here and there. Well, cricket is a sport that's pretty known around the world, but not here. It's not very familiar here. Most people here would say, it's a sport kind of like baseball. It's played with a bat and a ball on a field, right? It's not. Could be, could be white. He's missed the songs again. How many times have they done that? It's been called white. So that's. So some of you may be thinking, like, what even is that? Because that's exactly what I thought. Um, it's a pretty foreign sport to me. I had no clue. But over in London, it's so popular. They play it from when they're when we're playing soccer when we're five years old. But something that was different for me to... You're going to have to click. Could be, could be white. Something that was different for me was a sport to them that wasn't familiar. They had no clue what baseball was, and I was shocked. So, pretty familiar sport to all of us, right? But to them, it wasn't. It was very foreign. So, cricket is a sport that's played on a round field. And it's played with... 11 different positions on the field, and then two different hitters from the opposite team that are on both sides of that dirt strip there in the middle. And then behind the two hitters, there are three things coming out of the ground called wickets. Behind those wickets are a wicket keeper, which is known to us as a catcher. And then something that's very funky that I had to get used to because they didn't really explain it to us was the pitcher over there that plays cricket is called a bowler. And they don't pitch, they bowl. They bowl just like we regular bowl, regularly bowl. And they play, their pitcher or their uh, bowler can be any of those 11 positions. So he can just come off the field at any point in time, which can happen here, but it's not, not very common. So unlike most people, I'm unable to watch sports like a regular human being. I can't sit there and watch these sports and be like, oh, that was a good play. I'm like, oh crap, he broke his ankle. Like, I'm looking at him and I'm like, that is not normal. So something that I learned in London was the differences in the injuries. Because you look at the sports and you're like, they're kind of played similarly. Like, they should, they should be similar, right? They're not. So here you can see his foot on both sides. He's kind of landed awkwardly, and he's allowing his ankle to get that force to allow something extreme to happen, such as ankle sprains, fractures, and dislocations. And then also in their back, that lumbar spine is exposed to extreme forces when it's bent to the sides. And then with baseball, so you can see here with his arm, I don't know about your arm, but my, can't, my arm can't do that. So they're exposing themselves to those, those UCL tears, which is here in the elbow, and then rotator cuff injuries, which is in the shoulder. So they do have two very similar, or two different, two very different injuries that they're exposed to, but they also have something similar. Something that's not talked about or discussed much, it's called TOS. TOS is thoracic outlet syndrome, and in some cases can be very severe. So TOS can happen in overhead athletes that are repetitively throwing overhead or some overhead motion. So TOS involves the clavicle here, the first rib, which are two bony landmarks, your anterior scalene muscle, which is here, the brachial plexus nerve, which causes all of your feeling down in your arm, which is here, your subclavian artery here, and your subclavian vein here. So the red 
large structure, the subclavian artery travels blood to the rest of your hand and your arm. Subclavian vein travels it back to your heart. So if those things are compressed, it can be pretty severe because you're not getting blood to your hand when you need it there. So in that case, when those muscles or those, in, or those bony structures compress those arteries, veins, or um, nerves, it can cause some pretty severe symptoms. So neurological TOS, when that nerve is compressed, it can cause some numbness, tingling, burning down into your hand. And then that's the most common type of TOS. Then there's also arterial TOS and venous TOS. Arterial, arter, arterial like I said, is pretty severe because you can't get your blood to your hand. So when that's the case, they can present with swelling, heaviness, pain radiating down the arm, and a diminished pulse or pale arm. Of course, everything's compared bilaterally to the other side. And that, although that is very rare, but when we see those cases, we know, hey, we've got to send you. Something's not right here. You need to get this checked out. So what I learned in London was not only the things that I gained in knowledge, I also went outside of my comfort zone. I went and did something by myself and was able to do these things comfortably for the most part. And now I'm able to go up to athletes for the most part comfortably and confidently. And I'm able to rule out major conditions. So in May, I'm graduating with my uh, Bachelor's of Science in Athletic Training. And after I leave, I'm heading down to Salinas, Puerto Rico to be an assistant athletic trainer for the Puerto Rican Collegiate League. And then after I get back, I want to continue to try and work on the um, process of being a, becoming a major league baseball athletic trainer. I also wish to be in the international committee in the NATA. So without the encouragement of my preceptors, my family, my advisors, my peers, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have gone on that trip. I wouldn't have had the confidence to do it. So if you take anything away from my presentation, let it be that nothing is impossible, impossible and to always go outside your comfort zone. Thank you.